You know the day destroys the night Night divides the day Try to run, try to hide Break on through to the other side Break on through to the other side Break on through to the other side God bless America. Welcome to The Ranch, everybody. The podcast explores the people and happenings of Dry Creek Ranch, Eagle, and the greater Boise area. This is the third installment of the Eagle City Council interviews. Now, the ground rules were, of course, no one knew what questions I was going to ask, and I did not publish any of the interviews until all of the other interviews were done. And by doing this, I was sure that there was going to be no contamination of information. I do greatly appreciate the candidates taking the time to come out and talk to me. Obviously, they did not have to. This podcast is brought to you by Old State Saloon. I love this spot. They just remodeled it a few months back. They have wonderful live music. They have wonderful beer on tap. And the setting itself is just fantastic. Go down, check it out, have a drink, and enjoy yourself like I always do at Old State Saloon. My guest today is a very, very involved individual. He actually ran in the last election cycle and has been working extensively with his homeowners association and just with people in general in the community. He hits the city council meetings. And he really has an understanding of the larger issues that Eagle is facing as well, which was awesome to hear. I really enjoyed speaking with him. And he in particular reminded me how lucky the area is to have such awesome candidates. And I think Eagle will be very well served no matter who gets elected. But without further ado, the man, the myth, the legend, Robert Imhoff. Sweat, thank you for coming, sir. I appreciate you. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me. So... You're running, running for town council. You live in the southeast corner of Eagle, correct? That's right. Yeah. Okay. Or is it the, actually Eagle goes pretty far south? So you just live in the southeast corner over near uh, where 55 hits 44, right? Yeah, 55 okay, right. and 44. Like we're in a southeast corner, but as you know, there's two yeah. rivers. There's another right. southeast corner right. that uh, you know goes up Eagle Road towards uh, Meridian. Right. So I'm at the first southeast corner, like. And we border everybody. We border Boise and we border BL, uh, BLM or open ADA land. And we border um, Garden Valley or Garden City, excuse Garden me. Garden City, right. So we have like, it's kind of bizarre wherever you're standing on that intersection, you're in a different municipality. Right. And that, like, you really do bleed into a lot of different places really fast around here, which is kind of, which is kind of interesting. Then finding out that That's Avamore right. is actually part of three different counties. It's yes. like, oh gosh, man, what a train wreck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. And in fact, uh, our subdivision, um, the Great Great Sky Estates subdivision, is the only one in Eagle that all of our kids actually go to Boise, not West Ada. Really? That's right. So when it was oh. built 25 years ago, like they carved it out for that. So all of our kids actually go into Boise and into Garden City to go to school. So none of them will actually go to like Eagle High. So that's an interesting thing that I brought up that some people like, some people don't. Now, w- one of the things that you you would really like to do is increase collaboration with local schools, correct? That's right, yeah. Okay, now, h- help me understand this, because I am doing interviews with the Board of Education, um, Board of Education candidates. I came, uh, came from education, very much love it. I love helping educate uh, young and old. Doesn't matter. I don't even care what I'm teaching. Like, I could be teaching jujitsu or, you know, right. podcasting or math and grammar. Like, it doesn't matter to me. But the... Boise School District is distinctly different from the West Ada School District, or at least it appears to be in 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 a number of ways. Are you what's driving you to to increase collaboration with the schools in West Ada? So uh, again, I'm with Boise, but literally everybody else will be with West Ada. Mm-hmm. There, obviously, people are talking about growth, right? And a lot of younger families are coming to Eagle. Like the average age of who is a resident in Eagle, you know, was 55. Now it's drifting down to 38. So we're getting a lot more younger families or they're they're getting their start here or moving here with their families. And the city controls land within the city borders. We coordinate with Ada County on certain aspects and, and the state on other aspects. But Where does West Data need to be next? Do they need another elementary school in our borders? Do they need a second high school in our borders? Do they need that high school to expand in our borders? If we're not coordinating with West Data on simple questions like that, even if it's an you ask the question and get a straightforward answer, well, we at least ask the question and we have an answer. But I don't see right now publicly 
maybe um, privately there's these discussions, but I don't see publicly that the city is taking a forward approach of, you know, is there some an empty lot near a school? Should we help them acquire that? Or do we know the landowners? Uh, is it us, the city, that own that? Like, like, uh, or is there this other lot? Um, and we, we control the zoning here, right? People know what a zone is, or they ask for a variance to the city council and the planning commission. So we control all of that within the city. So how much are we coordinating with West Ada to say, you know, is the demographic ripe for a new school? We don't, none of us want our kids. We hear these horror stories right now, uh, nationwide, kids being dropped off eight, nine, 10 o'clock at night because some bus algorithm dumped them off in the wrong direction. And we had a little bit of that with West Ada last year, right? So we know that they are expanding and they're having a hard time getting bus drivers. And then when they do get the bus drivers, you're going farther and farther out to pick up kids. So we should be asking those questions of like West Ada. We're not Baltimore. We're not Chicago. We're not New York where the city council controls the city and the schools. We're not an East Coast setup of a city. Like they have West Ada. They have their you know, trustees that run the board for them. And then we have our city councilors. And But we need to discuss those things, I think. That's it's a really simple ask. And it's a quick win. You know, even if I don't get elected, I hope people hear this and say, yeah, maybe we should just ask that question publicly and get a response publicly. And then people will feel like when it comes to playground equipment, it's not just the parents who have skin in the game. It's the city. You know, it's everybody in the city that's impacted by that kind of stuff, right? I, I feel. This podcast is brought to you by mtustudios.com. If you are looking to start a podcast or make content for any level of your business, MTU Studios can help. Just reach out to us today and we can start shooting tomorrow. Yeah, no. I, and there are a lot of things that you said that, that I kind of want to touch on. First off, the I think there is a shifting public sentiment that there are more things going on in private than people know. Um, right. For instance, there did you watch the city council meeting or from, from this last week on Tuesday? Well, as far uh, as with the police and all yeah, that? Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was brutal. But, I mean, just really, really a bummer. That It's just really a bummer that that's kind of where the city council, that's where the city government is right now. Because, again, I'm not, I'm not saying I know what's right or wrong or yeah. anything, but it's like, dang, man, like this is not... It was kind of like being at a, my parents got divorced and I remember right before they got divorced, it was like being at the dinner table was always uncomfortable. It's like, right. God, <laughs> man, I can't, I was only seven, you know, it was oh, like, gosh. I even knew I was like, this is not working out. But, um, there, there is a growing perception that things are happening behind the scenes and there's not as much transparency as people would like. And, and again, I don't know the accuracy of what Charlie Bond wrote on, uh, when he went, you know, wrote his several posts on next door about Brad Pike. But there was the idea that I believe it was confirmed that like these people, or excuse me, not these people, but the, a few of the city council members got together outside of city meetings and you know discussed the issues that they felt were relevant with Brad Pike and they wanted to bring to you know the public's attention and then posted these things. It was like, wait, what else are you doing in private? Like, what sure. what's going on here? And the, so there's a sentiment that the, things are happening in private and that public public opinions are not being taken into account. So we're lacking transparency and accountability to to what the public actually wants. Do you do you think that that's a fair sentiment that's developing? Or do you think that, you know, like transparency in general is pretty good, we could do a little bit better? What What are your thoughts? Well, I have quite a bit of thoughts. And well, we have quite a bit of time. <laughs> on, on the transparency versus opacity and, and the city of Eagle. And... Um, there's actually a lot of civically engaged people here in Eagle. Uh, and a lot of people assert that, no, it's just a small minority of squeaky wheels. But everywhere I go, when I'm walking, you know, I'm not mailing out flyers. I'm walking to people's houses and giving them flyers, trying to understand people. Because, frankly, everybody knows that I pay attention to a lot of this in my neighborhood. And they came to me and said, like, we don't want to be the ones to step up, but you look like you could step up. Can you be You're our the voice? Right one. <laughs> Can you be our voice? Um, yeah. And because suddenly the speed limit's 20 miles an hour in downtown. Suddenly there's a variance on Hill Road where a building got built where it was more denser than was normally allotted, right? Suddenly um, there's 
a whole new public storage building going up on the freeway there that's a lot more gaudy than people were anticipating they were thinking of like a low one and now we're seeing these like two-story facades like being put up and everything and it's changing the character and i keep on using this word suddenly because when people go to the city or go to the city council members today and say where did the speed limit thing well if you're not paying attention that's your own fault you should have came down here and said something you know like we can't tell you about every little thing we do um, or you need to be paying closer to civic things but it constantly comes up like suddenly there's a lawsuit with home depot suddenly there's a, a shutdown of the senior center like everything's suddenly like suddenly like everybody is in unison and ha on the same page on city council but the public is like why are we just hearing about this or why are we noticing it after the fact you know and so i think that we need to stop saying suddenly more <laughs> We need to start saying, like, this was definitely anticipated that this was going to come up. We talked about it. We socialized it with everybody in the community. We're not Boise. We're not over 250,000 citizens. There's only 38,000 people that live in this town, you know. So, And it's in a tight geographical area. We're kind of landlocked by Meridian to the south and Boise and, and uh, Garden City to the east and star to the west and it's open to the north but we're just kind of in this little pocket uh it should be very straightforward for us to communicate with our citizens and let them know what's coming up what's on the minds what's how are we meeting this 40-year plan that everybody keeps talking about right I, I don't know how lowering the speed limit from 25 to 20 you know helps everybody you know i feel like if you're pro small business if you're pro business and you want people visiting downtown, but then you also simultaneously say, well, we're lowering the speed limit because there's too many people going through that corridor right now. So you don't want people going through and seeing your small businesses and visiting them and patroning them, you know, but, and your way to do that is to lower the speed limit. And then when you tell everybody why you did it, it was for safety. But every report, I just read a report out of the UK that said, when you lower it below 25, you actually cause more congestion. So you, maybe you don't have as many accidents, but suddenly everybody's bumper to bumper when you go too slow in these areas. I, I don't know. Did they read that report? Did they put it into consideration? Hard to say because we don't have the transparency that I think the citizens want. Right. When you talk about communicating back and forth, uh, communicating with the citizenry, you're, you're, you're saying it, it sounds that you're really emphasizing expressing you know, what's on the agenda, essentially, like, look, we're considering this, we're considering this. But there's also a, a feeling that it's, there's n n one that there's insufficient one way communication coming out of the city government, and that there's zero communication being considered coming from the citizenry back to the, to the, uh, oh, my gosh, to, to the town council and mayor, I was um, administration, I yeah, like the, the, sure. the, the word completely escaped me. But again, the, the, talking about Avamore, which is a big, big piece oh, of big piece of what you're talking about, it's almost like I'm hitting my head against the wall. Like, and again, I don't, I didn't vote for Avamore. I didn't know, any, I didn't know anything about it. It was like it was a place up there that we, you know, thought was too far out to move to, so we we moved here. Whatever, it, right. it is what it is. Like, I don't, I don't have skin in the game here. But people talking about being Av being for Avamore and being against Avamore, it's like, okay, like that's it's very interesting. Like, let me hear about it. So obviously Mayor Pierce emphasized that that we get control of that development, which is like, okay, that makes sense. You know, it's like we can decrease the density, we can utilize more of the open spaces, we can do we can do stuff with it. It's like, okay, look, I'm not a planning and developing guy, but like that makes sense to me. And then turning around and hearing, you know, uh former Mayor Ridgeway and then uh Councilman Brad Pike say, look, it's not financially viable. Like yeah, I would love to have a two-acre back yard that I could do all kinds of things with and benefit. That'd be great. Yeah, it would be wonderful. <laughs> Financially, I can't do it. Like I can't even do the half acres. I can't. Like, right. I don't have. I don't have it. So, taking all that into consideration, it's like, okay, what what was the public's input on this? And two things: one, do you feel like the public sentiment and and opinions were taken into account with the decision to annex and Avamore? And two, 
do you think the benefits, so that's the first uh, direction of conversation. Do you think the other direction of, of, of communication with the benefits the city of Eagle gets out of bringing Avmore in were properly expressed or even were those reasons justifying the decision? Yeah, a lot to unpack there. Lots to unpack. Lots so to unpack. again, communication. But let's talk about um, what the city says, what our city leaders currently say. They right. say, like, for example, uh, I'd like to bring the speed limit in downtown back sure. up to 25 miles an hour. They said what the consistent thing they said was, why didn't you show up and tell us you weren't interested in it being lower to 20? If you really didn't want that lower to 20, you should have showed up. Okay, so let's take that premise. Show up to city council during these meetings and voice your concerns. Okay, nobody showed up for that. How many people showed up for the Avamore decision, not just city council, but also the planning commission? Record numbers. There was, they had to split both meetings into two separate days. And even with that, they ended up having to turn people away and stop accepting uh, comments. Has not happened in the last five years here in Eagle that much civic participation in something that's happening in our city. So on one hand, they say, show up and have your voice heard. That's why we did that thing without knowing people didn't want that speed limit load. Record number of people never showed up in more droves than they have for Avamore. Only one person dissented on that, put in a dissenting vote. In fact, our own planning commission, they looked at the whole plan and said, this doesn't make sense. So the city actually like ignored the recommendations of our paths we have like a committee that works on like the paths and the parkways and and the jogging paths and they said the way that this is designed for their paths is not consistent with the aesthetic and the long-term viability of our paths system you should put that into consideration they ignored that the planning commission said you don't have control over a lot of the aspects of this as is so I did hear a lot of people say, well, you don't understand everything. You don't have all the information. Well, we had like four separate days of public comment. Where was the people providing us with this information, this nebulous information that everybody that was for the Avamore annexation, you just don't have enough information. What am I missing? What was the information I should have had that we all could have been convinced and none of us would have showed up? So this is what we talk about with like transparency, right? Like. They keep saying there's that information, but none of it was presented, or at least a convincing argument wasn't presented to change people's mind. And let's look at some of the benefits. I think this is nobody's talking about this, and this is fascinating to me. When you look on KTVB, when you look on Boise Dev articles discussing this, they always are trying to be fair and impartial. Sure. Here's why the people who don't want it don't want it. Let's get a comment for the people who say why this is a good idea and good for the city of Eagle. And the number one reason cited is we will have more control over Avamore. Like we'll have more control over that development if we annex it into the city. But that's 100% untrue. In fact, that's why the planning commission didn't want it approved. Because if you look at our city charter, you have this is how you deal with trees. This is how you deal with new developments. This is how you deal with easements. And then you look at, and then this is like speed limits and how we find people for parking. You know, you have the whole system of laws and ordinances within the city of Eagle. Then all the way down at the bottom, you have two special categories. Uh, one for Vale, Valnova, which they categorize as uh, Spring Valley in the ordinance. And then right below that, it says Avamore. So what, if you click on that Avamore link in our city charter, it says the rest of the city will design their buildings and look one way. They'll have their trees look one way. They'll have their front yards look one way. And Avamore, and this cannot be changed without Avamore developers agreeing to it, will do everything their own way. So this big argument to people say we need to annex them so we can control what they do. Well, we annex them and put in a unchangeable rule in our ordinance that says we can't if they decide that they want to build 1200 in one year we can't stop them if they want to have zero scape instead of zero scape you know like rocks and everything in their front yards it's in their plan that's what they said they wanted to do we have to let them do it that way so this idea of we need eagle to look a certain way that we approve things like 
in and out has to look a certain way. The McDonald's has to have all these trees in front of it to mask that it's a McDonald's, you know, like we're trying to keep this certain eagle charm. We have to, the rest of us have to do that. But then Avamore, they've already picked exactly what their charm is going to be and what it's going to look like. And any future city council has no say without them coming to the table first and saying, we want to make a variance on our plan. But if the city says, you know what, times have changed, ordinances have changed, we want to make a variance on the Avamore plan, they're like, they can just say no. So, so this argument, like we had no choice but to say yes, because maybe we'd have gotten sued or maybe they would have uh, caused these other problems. Boise all the time, they know they have to let apartment complex go up or a townhome complex go up. And what do they say? Well, we like these five different buildings, but they all look the same. Can you come back to us? We'll say no if you submit it now, but come back to us and like change the facades around a little bit. They can, they change the facades and then they say, okay, now it's approved. We didn't do any of that. We just rubber stamped this Avamore thing and just rushed it through. Everybody will say, well, this has been five years in the making. Well, five years of the developer, five years of various city council people talking with them, but only six months of public comment, six months of publicly showing this is what we're going to do. How many community meetings they started and got canceled? Like, in the, like it's everybody's arguing. We're not going to talk here anymore. How many that were they supposed to have that they just decided not to have? And people, because everybody that showed up was mad and angry and upset. So clearly the community spoke up here on this particular issue. I just right. said a whole bunch no, of, no, no, no. of stuff I'm, for you to unpack yourself. I'm listening and taking it all in. And, yeah. and again, the, what you're saying is kind of, there is this void. And again, Mayor Pierce did not have a vote. Right. So, I mean, obviously speaking with him, I can't say like, you know, why did you vote this? He didn't. He was like, look, they made the decision and uh, he thought it was the right decision. And he he did say exactly what you said. We have more control over how it's developed and how it turns out now. They're, you know, a close neighbor of ours and having control over over how that close neighbor does things is a is a benefit to Eagle. I said, all right, that's that's fine. But what you're saying very clearly is we don't really have control over him. The developer gets control. That can't be changed. They're going to have their own aesthetic. They're going to have their own regulations for walking paths, speed limits, all of those different things. And and again, communication, right? If there were these other benefits outside of having control of this other – like we don't have control of Garden City. Does anybody worry about that? Right. No, exactly. like we don't have control of Meridian. They're, they're building 2,500 homes a year. Does anybody worry about that? I don't worry about Meridian. Do you? No. Like no. <laughs> there could be a development on the moon. I don't care. Like it doesn't doesn't matter to me. And again, I I'm, I'm not saying I know all of the facts. What I'm saying is as you're indicating, this this nebulous, unidentifiable unidentifiable benefit aside from having control has never been you know successfully articulated. At, right. at least that's what I'm understanding from the conversations I've I've had with everybody. It's like, okay, again, Mayor Pierce, you thought it was the right decision. You didn't make the call, but you did think it was the right decision that people made it. Your recommendation was for it, and you you want control over it. Okay, I get that. But does that justify? So does that justify what it costs Eagle? So in your mind, if you were if you were on the town council at the time the vote was coming through, for Avamore or not? Definitely not as written. I want to be clear. Not as written. Not now, as that's, written. that's important. I want to be clear. I like that we grow. We just all are going to naturally grow. And, um, you know, Val Nova is going to continue to grow. And there's going to be developers, like right now near my house on Hill Road, they're building out this whole Estrada development. It was all just like empty land. Like development will occur. It's just what development where and who's responsible. Like Avamore is this great concept for a little township on the other side of the hill. That's great. Why does it have to be Eagles Township is a big question. And if it is going to be our township, how much control are we going to really have with that over there? And I'd want to be fair to the developers during this whole process when they presented their arguments. They had this bullet list of other things besides Eagle will have control. This is what city leaders say their justification is. Sure. But the development itself, they had this bullet list of reasons why they think like it should be annexed into eagle and like one of them for example is well we will expand the highway 55 as part of this and and like so you want us to annex it so we can but 
developers are told that they have to expand anyways, whether it's expand, whether like dry, whether it's part of the city of Eagle or not. Yeah. Like, uh, Ada County is going to say, well, you got to widen that gem County. is going to say, you're going to have to widen that, you know, uh, Boise County, you're going to have to widen that. Right. And that's just, that's just, is going to have to widen 55 all the way up to like the golf course or something. Yeah. For them to say in their bullet points that they're going to have the brevity to do this. Like, well, somebody was going to tell you to do that anyways. Well, we're going to give away land to build elementary schools or other or middle schools here. Well, the land's going to be required no matter what. So you just having, again, the brevity to give away. But now you're picking where you want that school to be in your neighborhood, not working with West Ada, working with Eagle. Where does it make sense? We have all of these maps. We have all of these growth area things. They can just say, eh, nobody's going to buy land right here in this parcel it's kind of off here it's kind of too close to a foothill that has you know some rock slides or something we'll just give them that you know you're saying they're going to give the elementary school to the rock slide parcel (laughs) well well maybe i don't know it doesn't have a good view it doesn't have a good view correct yeah Uh, not that the kids would get injured but um no i i I get your point i get you so now now uh avamore gets to pick where those where they're because they didn't say in advance the elementary school will be here and we don't have a say in where it is. Well, we'll have a say in the sense that they'll listen to us, but they don't have to. Gotcha. So, and then another thing is if before they did the annex, they should have went to West Ada. They should have went to the school districts in Gem and the school districts in Boise County and said, listen, we think we're going to annex this over there. It makes the right choice. You have school districts that technically aren't here. Just like my neighborhood is not in West Ada. My neighborhood, it goes to Boise School District. There's no reason why those counties can't pass an ordinance saying, you know what, for the Avamore division, we're just going to carve out and say that's going to be West Ada. And if they came to our city and said, look, we already figured out the school stuff. Don't worry. Kids are not going to go to high school in Emmett. Kids are not going to go to high school in Horseshoe Bend. They're all going to come back to Eagle. They're all going to be on the same bus. They're all going to be friends in the neighborhood and friends at school. Right. Friends on the football team, friends at uh, at home. It's all going to be connected. They didn't do any of this stuff. And it's very easy for the city to say, we like what you're doing, but what about this? What about this? Maybe they did, and they said no. But again, we don't have that transparency. So I'm not against Avamore per se. I'm against like all the stuff that they sold us a bill of goods. They said it's going to be good for us, but sending kids to Horseshoe Bend from there, for high school that doesn't sound good to those people no no it doesn't so now one of the one of the biggest um kind of brouhaha's over avmore aside from people feeling like their voices weren't being heard was really what to do with the public services right and it's like listen we just added a big chunk of people population wise we added a monster area geographic wise that is geographically removed from the what rest of the eagle eagle town right you know, so obviously the the law enforcement aspect came in, and this is really one of the things that looking looking through this whole whole last six months, it's like this lit on fire hard because you know again the last time the city council had approved prior to uh, Tuesday, the last time the city council had approved additional law enforcement agents was twenty twenty one in October. You know they were so it's been a little while. Right. What do you think about law enforcement? There, there's so many considerations. Do we need a certain uh, ratio of the number one to one thousand is thrown around a lot? Do we need to keep them as a deterrent and just kind of hold steady at this level? Do you think that the citizens of Eagle are getting ta- and double taxed as uh, Mayor Pierce feels they are? Do you think it would be worth exploring starting Eagle starting their own police department? And again, I know I'm hitting you with a lot oh, yeah, of different yeah. questions, but this all seems to be coming out where there's the sentiment that the residents of Eagle are getting double taxed because they pay county taxes and then they pay the sheriff's department to have uh, an Eagle Police Department. There's all kinds of questions about whether or not we're actually completely understaffed if we should be trying to achieve the one per 1,000 ratio. Just hit me with the thoughts on it. And again, sure. this brought in broad strokes, but like, There's a lot here that I think a lot of people are very, very concerned about. Well, let's start off and just be clear. Like, we need police in our patrolling dedicated to our city. 
So to roll back the contract and just pay into the county and not have a dedicated police department, whether we're outsourcing it to the county or we decide at some point in the future to just home grow our own and it's completely detached from them, um, we, we need dedicated police here, bar none. Now, uh, my platform is that, you know, I want to try and roll back Avamore, like have us de-ax and there's actually code in Idaho law that you could try and use and there's other strategies you can do. But for the sake of argument, it's not going to work. Everybody advises us. The city's going to put itself in a sling. We're going to have to have Avamore here going forward. They are part of the city. And on a go forward basis, regardless of how much we're upset that it's now part of us and that's the way it is, they need police and dedicated police just like us because they're our city. What is disconcerting to me is they kind of get to have their cake and eat it too out there because they're so detached. Well, we're going to need a police department out there. We're going to need a fire department out there. So now you're going to have two, three officers dedicated there, a full engine dedicated there. It's going to be like they're their own city and they get their own custom private police department and private uh, fire department that's exclusive to them. Yes, if there's a major call on 55, maybe those officers will drive down here. But they're more than likely than not to get called to county calls outside of Avamore in that area than they are to be pulled back. So they get to basically have their own township with their own brick and mortar police and fire department. And the rest of the city is going to pay for it because the economies of scale, the rest of us, our taxes are going to go up. They're going to pay more. I speak to people over at Avamore. And they're like, we know our taxes are going up, but we it was in our CCNRs. We couldn't stop them from trying to annex us. We had no skin in this game. They had right. to allow them to do it. So a lot of people out there, they themselves are like, we didn't want to be part of Eagle, but here we are. But here we are. And they deserve safety and fire response just as much as anybody else. But now we're going to be in a situation where it's like, why do they get two dedicated officers? Why do they get three firefighters down there? you know, dedicated just to them. So it's a bad look in a way, but we it needs to happen if that's the direction we're going to go in. And that's, that's a, that, that is what it is because pub, I'm not going to sacrifice public safety because we don't like something. Right. Right. And especially you don't like a decision that you didn't make that happened and sometime in the past of, yeah. that you can't do anything about it. Correct. Right. That like, well, we shouldn't have to blank, blank, blank. It's like, that's irrelevant. What, right. What's relevant now is that Avmore is part of Eagle and those people deserve the exact same services that the rest of Eagle deserves. It's just going to cost everybody more because response times are more and we're going to have to theoretically add more people. Now, again, the, one of the 12 questions I asked you is, yeah. do, you, do you think we should – we did um, – excuse me. I should stop saying we. The, the administration did vote to add two more deputies to the yeah. role, okay, which is – Great I move. thought it was great. Great. 100%. Great. Awesome. Yes. Do you and, think uh, they should keep going though or do you think the two is sufficient? I think the two is sufficient for here and now. I think three to four more over the next four years, we'll say, is probably the prudent thing. We actually do a pretty good job here of when it's referred to as community policing. The police being out, they're not just there pulling, like being a speed trap. They're not there just responding to uh, 911 calls. They're, you know, like when we have Eagle Days, they're out there spending time with the community. You know, they have booths and stuff at Gerber Park, and uh, they're giving little stickers to the kids along with the firefighters, you know. Like, it's there to ensure us safety is right around the corner. That if something catastrophic happened, huge accident, they're able to cordon things off, have some first aid that the firefighters don't, they can get there faster and start responding. They're not just there because crime, right? Because crime, right. You know, right. like crime is uh, what we see in the TV shows and the movies. You know, are police officers good? Are they bad? All these shows are showing that they're doing these things, you know, right. like um, Crash, that movie, you know, really painted the L.A. police in a really poor light, right? Like, we're in I didn't Eagle. care for that movie. Did you like that movie? No, not, not no. especially, no. And it got so much press. Yeah. Like it, it really, won awards. It won awards, critically acclaimed. And I watched yeah. that, I was like, this movie's trash. Like, I don't know. I mean- And then they had a TV show spinoff on it too. I know. So. I, th I think people are just, they're just grabbing at the lowest hanging fruit with it. I, I don't know. We're not going to talk about Crash. Anyway, sure. I'm, but, I apologize. But, but my point is, 
like um you know that's tv and reality is you know you want to see police officers this is a, a criticism i'll give of ada county uh, a, a very small criticism i really don't like police cruisers that are blacked out as much as possible like you want to know there's a police officer in a parking lot you want to know that there's a police officer's car parked at the local subway you know you, just their mere presence hey i see them driving around hey i see those light bars up you know that's the, what i think is good community policing the paint on the sides white though right for our city oh <laughs> For the Hear my bad joke, yeah. and the, yeah. you're actually taking me seriously. Okay, yeah. so the the county patrollers, the county patrollers, all oh. there's they're, it says police all blacked out on the side, but but our cars for the city of Eagle they have white, they have the same county logo star. I was going to say it looks really nice. Okay, yeah. okay, I see what you're saying. That's but a the, that's a fair point. But that's the the, the county uh, cruisers. Like I feel like you want to know that the police are around. You know, like I come home from Steelheads games at 10:30 at night, and invariably. On State Street, there's always a couple of county cruisers having somebody pulled over there on State over by the Maverick uh, gas station. Yeah. Uh, there's always one. I don't know what it is that time of night. Somebody's doing something that re- requires them being pulled over after every single game. I'm season ticket holder, so I, I'm down there in Boise all the time watching those games. And, um, yeah, at the games, we have the police officers that just stand there towards the exits. You have big events. You're required to have police present at big events. You're required to have... sure firefighters at big events but they're not just sitting there off in the corner they're interacting with the public the public right. comes up to them and thanks them for their service or hey you helped me on this crash over here do you remember me like oh yeah i remember that crash from two they're interacting that's what that's the side of policing i hope people remember you know that's why these guys and gals all join up for the forces right. for that they want to know that they're keeping their community safe and that the community knows they're there, not the crime. So that's my big, long, drawn-out way of saying this one per thousand thing. It's not necessarily the right fit just to say, well, yeah, in a Baltimore, in a Chicago, in a New York, in an L.A., the one per thousand means a lot in those densely populated, high-density, high-population areas. But 38,000 citizens, you know, like, there's a, there's a difference there. You don't necessarily have to go by the rule of the big city, right? Right. In a relatively affluent, sleepy area. Right. right. Now, now there is there is a disparity between origins of crime. Is it locally sponsored, uh, locally, you know, kind of bred crime versus crime coming from outside? And of course, you want to be deterred from crime coming from the outside. And you want to make sure that you give the citizens enough, you know, obviously opportunity to thrive and grow and engage so that they don't turn to a life of crime local citizens right but that's right you know again if we were if this was a town of 38,000 and there were you know if we were financially destitute and there there were a lot of problems that lead to locally sponsored crime and you have outside influences coming in then i i see what you're saying which is you know yeah we could we could need one in a thousand but your position is yeah let, let's keep growing the force we don't necessarily need to hit to the one in a thousand mark right but we need to keep keeping up with it we need to make sure that we're maintaining the the safety and quality of life that people have come to expect that's right and again the visual police presence if we're going to be covering more ground like I see when I'm on the road, I see at least one cruiser every time I'm out on the road here. When I go pick up my daughter from school, um, I see one either in the parking lot adjacent to her school or on the road. I see them just like just driving around being present. And that in of itself deters so much because it sends signals to the people coming in thinking, oh, this is a sleepy bedroom community. You know, maybe I can break into houses or something. But as soon as they come in, they're immediately met with there's a police park there there's a police on the road there there's a police walking a beat so to speak downtown you know they're like well this is a town that takes its public safety seriously you know um and so that's a good deterrent and right i'm pretty sure any police officer or any police uh association will agree you know like police presence is a huge deterrent and so adding some more officers to maintain that visual mm-hmm. is worth a lot but do we need to add 10 more probably not gotcha yeah. gotcha and again that's a that's a really nice kind of middle ground position which which i think is awesome um speaking of you mentioned changing demographics uh earlier on so yeah. you know going from average age in the 50s down to like average age in the high 30s more families moving to the area 
I mean, obviously it's a fantastic place to raise kids and it seems like a, I would love to retire here as well. Like that, that would be great. But how do we support all of those people? Right? Because the budget in Eagle has ballooned. Um, Number of city employees in Eagle has ballooned. First, do you think that the city of Eagle and the citizens of Eagle are getting the return on their investment from our increase in budget and employment base? Uh, well, that's hard to say. Again, I don't have all the numbers, so um, those are not those are presented in a way to the public where you know it's not very clear. If I was them, I would try and have bullet points and ring to the to the hills as much as possible. Like, see, look how well this worked out, um, or look how we're stretching our dollar is another important thing of, yes, we expanded it, but that was a measured expansion. Uh, so I don't know, okay. to be quite frank. And that's totally I don't know. fair, right? Like I don't we, know how well right. we're doing that. And I'd love to find out more and get more involved uh, while on city council and then socialize and come back on your podcast later and say, love you know what? We, we left that question hanging. I got an answer for you now. You yeah, know? right. And uh, here it's great or it's not great. And here's what we're doing, you know? So, uh, but I will tell you, like, the city... You know, we had Eagle Days, which is a fun thing that's been going on for sure. years. Um, a lot of feedback from Eagle Days. So, like, are they doing things well? I, th- I feel like they're slipping a little bit. Like, we had this parade where you throw water balloons and people come in the cars and wave and all that. Um, but they cut the parade in half without telling ever- anybody. At the last second, they said, oh, it's starting at Hill Road. It's not starting at Edgewood. And now you had everybody packing in. And then on top of that, uh, one of the city officials was went public on social media and said oh yeah if you want to just hold your own spot and put a chair there you know the day before you can do that so all of a sudden there was this mad scramble like it's the rose bowl parade in pasadena (laughs) california and so when people that casually said oh i think we have time we can go down there and they go down to do the parade and it's not a spot for any casual person to show up and then the people were there they're putting they're cordoning off and putting tape and everything and then i was like you know what I have a friend who has a business down there and uh, she's the property manager. I'll ask her like, Hey, maybe I can just go in front of your property. It's your property. So I can say like, no, no, like we're going to cordon it off. And she's like, sure. And we go down there like, nope, we did it. I'm like, but we have permission from the owner of this business. And they're like, and they're like, well, the sidewalk and this and that, and they start getting into all that kind of stuff. And we're like, Oh gosh you know like like we were trying to be clever and be like okay we're going to do it the right way and work with right. the business that it's in front of and everybody and so it was in every person from the selves last time i checked we're supposed to be this small community where it's not every person for themselves and every family for themselves it's supposed to be we're going to get along so why they shrunk the parade route i don't know why they allowed everybody to make reserves of where they could sit the day before and now you have people like hey i got to leave work and go get some lawn chairs yeah, right. and throw it down there right. because I'm not going to have a spot for tomorrow, you know? Um, and then you actually get to the downtown area and it's gorgeous. They got the cars over here and they got all the booths and vendors over there and they got the uh, cornhole and I love playing in that every year. It's super fun. But one thing I observed and I don't know how the city missed this, but there was a single public trash can anywhere, anywhere, not on the parade route. And they're like, don't use water balloons because then they break and then they get stuck and it's hard to get them up and we have to clean that. But then they don't even provide trash bins. And usually I thought there was things uh, at the uh, county level where they're like, oh, if you're going to have an event of a certain size, you're required to put out, like to work with Harden and put out these like cardboard square trash bins yeah, right. everywhere. Just throw away bins. Yeah, just yeah. like have these all set up. There wasn't a single one. There was one vendor that brought their own hardened trash bin out. <laughs> and then it was overflowing because it was the only trash bin uh, near the gazebo. It's just some weird head scratching stuff of like, uh, so are they doing a good job with uh, the expansion and having the parks department do this? I'm glad they host it. I hope we have it for many years to come. Are they having some growing pains with stuff? Absolutely. Will those growing pains be solved by hiring more people? I don't know. But probably listening to the public and taking feedback, like after the an event like that, when somebody says in public comment, hey, here's X, Y, and Z you want to think of for next year. Did they hear it? I don't know. Right. We'll see. So maybe a little bit more being deliberative about things. Um, and if they're more deliberative about things, then if we need to expand the government we well, like well 
well, this didn't go so well. If we had a couple more people in the parks, we could have done X, Y, and Z, you know, but right. you have to have that two-way communication path. So, right, right. So do I know if we're set right or not? Well, I don't because we're low information. Gotcha. And, yeah. and again, very, makes perfect sense. Then again, we're, we're a growing community as we keep coming back to, right? We're, we're becoming a younger community. How do we manage to get the holy grail of employment and and tax revenue, the mom and pops, right? right? How do we do essentially make Eagle like the most habitable incubator for mom and pops possible? Because we can't just be a community where people just come and they sleep and then they go spend their money elsewhere, right? That we're not going to be able to maintain the level of services. We are not going to be able to continue bringing on new deputies and increasing the parks and rec and, and things like that. How do we pay for these things? It has to be tax dollars. So how do we incubate, right? How do we get more mom and pops, but also recognize that it's like, I love shopping at Home Depot. Yeah. You know, I would love it if there was a Costco here, right? We hit Winco, you know, like we, we do these things and, and nobody likes to say that corporate America is great, but the big box stores and, and stores like that do bring in very consistent, valuable tax revenue. That's right. So how do we get both? How do we get the benefit of being an incubator for mom and pop shops, but also find a way to, to successfully integrate larger businesses and in fact, attract them? Yeah. And uh, let's be clear, and maybe this won't get me votes or maybe I'll lose votes by saying this, but you know, every business has a right to be a business and come into a community and be a business in that community. I, I wholeheartedly believe that. So, um, you know, places like San Francisco where they actually tell people that are large organizations, you cannot have more than 11 Starbucks in the entire city of San Francisco. You cannot have more than 11 Rite Aids in the entire. So they say, fine, you're this big business that's nationwide, worldwide, whatever. We like San Francisco actually has an ordinance that limits how many storefronts that person or that, that entity can have. And in other places they say, well, we don't even want X type of business in our community, period. Right. Um, th that just doesn't, th that just doesn't fly. This is America. We, we are a capitalistic society, you know, um, like if somebody, if it's a right fit for them, they wouldn't be coming to our community if they didn't feel like we weren't a good fit for them. And, we and if it's not a right fit, let them figure that out. That's right. That's right. And, um, and so I think, but there is something to be said for the corridors. You know, you have the Eagle Road corridor, you have the Linder corridor, you have the 44 corridor, and you have the 55 corridor. Like having some of these bigger, more established things on these corridors, that makes sense. Like having an In-N-Out burger off of Floating Feather and Eagle, probably not a good idea, <laughs> you know. Um, but but one, somewhere else, perhaps? Like, What, what are your thoughts on In-N-Out? <laughs> well, I, I would be biased. Uh, of I'll try and hit some key areas everywhere. There's a bit of a food desert in west eagle like you have like a dickies and a so delicious and that's those are kind of and that's kind of it and i mean there's like a restaurant in the chateau place and there's like a breakfast joint at the dino gas station there kind of thing but on that stretch right there there's nothing you can get right. some you can get a quick bite at jackson's the new jackson's that just opened up on park a, a couple of years ago um yeah you can get like you know a hot dog that's been rolling there for three hours or something. God. But it's uh, like that Seinfeld episode when Kramer eats the hot dog that's like 15 years the old. The forbidden hot dog. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, but you see in there, there's a lot of development ready to happen in there. Yeah. So, uh, as a city, should we not be pushing for something to go in there? We've mm -hmm. been told there's pads available on Hill and 55 for years. That, that sign's been up for years that like pads available. It's all, re it's all zoned, ready to go. That would be a great place for for something for uh like i i would be fascinated if the hill in 55 there because of the affluency near there like where you got dry creek here you have all of eagle like what if that was like uh what they do in the malls now where they have like a the like boutique upscale mm. uh things in this section of the mall so if you go to the mall in like uh san jose california they have a westfield mall they have a whole section that's here's the cartier store here's the watch store here's the tiffany store 
and it's kind of like zoned off in like in this corridor and then you have all the like the food court over here and your old navy over there got but, it if you if, but, if, but if a you had like a bougie builder hears this and they build that i'm just gonna cry yeah. i don't like that but but what, <laughs> but what i'm saying is that, uh, more that, upscale that, stuff that that area is prime for having you know a a nice high-end jewel like a rolex jeweler a cartier a, a coach bag so it's it's so it's a like people of eagle we don't have to go all the way down to the boise town square we don't have right. to go all the way to that intersection that's a cluster that is fairview and eagle road because you know you got simon's over there right. and it's a great spot you got hal davis down in boise it's just another great spot but but like a lot of the money in the valley is like right here. Why right. wouldn't we have something like so? Uh, these are not things that I would push and say you have to do that. I'm just saying if that happened, I wouldn't argue the point. <laughs> right. You know? right, and they're doing a very good job. K- uh, Kitty corner to that at uh, Barber and Provisions and yeah. Coffee and Supply. That's my like, barber. Yeah, th- th- those are very nice, not cheap uh, places that people can patronize. And uh, again, like Coffee and Supply is not cheap coffee. Like and and Barber Provisions is but it's very good well coffee. Done. It's worth it's it. No, 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 absolutely. And and the, the uh, shout out Alliance Jiu Jitsu. They're they're right over yeah, there as well. They just right. built a new building. It's beautiful. Um, yeah, it's. I get what you're saying. Um, and and let me be clear. I don't think, well, let me ask you, when you say any business has a right, you're not entertaining like brothels have a right to come into no. Eagle, right? Because I know somebody out there is like, oh, any business, bro, any business. And sure. It's like, Thank you no, for bringing that up. Yeah, Sure. No. And you don't necessarily want, you know, low end smoke shops or like 27 tattoo parlors or, you know, not, nothing. Got I would think stuff, Ace but, Tattoo parlor, yeah. parlor being here, it, if they want to open up shop. But if you're right, if it's like the row of tattoo parlors and smoke shops right. that's what a city council is here for and that's what the citizens are here for to inform us right. as a city council like like we don't want to have like the food role we don't want like downtown eagle to be a food court right, right. where like every it's like in and out mcdonald's jack in the box right. subway like just a strip like um you have a lot of that stuff in california where you have like el camino real where it's just one national brand after the other just kind of daisy chains yeah. down a road and then it's infilled with car dealerships in between all of these things uh, certainly like we have control to we should have control to navigate those kind of waters but at the same time for somebody to come here especially here where we're green field so to speak if uh if a jeweler wants to come in and say i want to put a jewelry shop there it's like no that'll interrupt the one jewelry stop on the other t- side of town Right. right. Or if Jack in the Box says they want to go on um, Floating Feather in 55 next to the gas station out there or Beacon Light, uh, if they want to put one across from that back gas station, there is no fast casual restaurant on that corridor to speak of like like Great Scott and then that gas station on Beacon Light. Those are your last two things before you get to Avamore and then there's another gas station, right? So to set up like maybe something out there that makes sense and it's reasonable and it's measured, but to make all of 55 just fast food restaurants, that's probably not a good mix either. Not a good mix. Right. I have a gripe. I feel bad that I'm going to bring this up. Bring it up. Yeah. Uh, the gas station at 55 and Beacon. Yeah. They have started the tactic. They So they have a really big mart in there and they have, they have you know, like very nice handmade stuff too. Like sometimes they have like axes and knives and stuff. A there. lot of hot I, sauces I too. Eat a lot of hot sauces and they, <laughs> they just have like big mart, right? And it's not uncommon to understand that gas stations in general don't make a lot of money in the gas side, and but right. they make money in the mart side. But bro, they have gotten in the habit of making me go inside to pay the cashier they won't let the the electronic card reader outside work. And it doesn't even say it's broken. It just says see cashier. So they get oh. you inside. Fascinating. I'm, Fascinating. I'm sorry to be calling you out. Please stop doing that. I, I'm in a rush. I have three kids. I don't want to go in and wait. And, yeah. and then there are like six people in line because everybody trying to get gas has to come inside. And they're all like, ugh. Right. There's just, it's, like, it's like four minutes of my life. I never get back every time. Like I, I've started avoiding the gas station because they're making me come inside to pay. Like, That's right. I can't do this. Don't do that. I'm going to have to go to Great Scott's. Like I can't do it. And well, uh, <laughs> well, you mentioned that you'd had somebody, uh, I won't spoil your future podcast, but you mentioned you have somebody coming on soon from the state office that's actually the bring it up there because yeah. that's actually where that's controlled oh uh, there's actually there are actually regulations around things like that um that the state does have, the attorney general and some other offices actually if you bring to their attention oh. like uh, especially with the life of how long that gas station's been there 
nobody can really use the excuse to malfunctions and stuff. Right. All of them are malfunctioning. So uh, there's actually an ADA thing component to this as well. I had no so. idea. And I asked the gal yesterday. I'm like, listen. Well, she just probably just works there. What does she I, oh, know? of course she just works there. I was like, why do you why do you make me come inside? And she's yeah. like, well, we just love you guys so much. I'm like, listen, I love you too. Don't make me come inside. Like, I, w- I would love to keep buying gasoline from you whenever my car needs it and, and recommending, oh, just stop at the gas station. Instead yeah. of saying, like, don't stop there because I have to go over here because guess what? They're going to make me come inside. Right. I'm but, sorry. But there are some, there, you do have actual redress here yeah, for well, something like that listen, gonna, <laughs> if gonna, you wanted to follow I'm it. I'm going to talk to my people. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, so – Properly placed development is what yeah. I think you're saying. And and encouraging people to come in. If you want to come in, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's figure out what, what we can do and not try to section off. The, one thing that um, Mayor Pierce said and uh, Councilman Pike said that are absolutely in con- conflict is Mayor Pierce said, look, like in and out the residents of Eagle don't want to be the first, second, or third in and out. They want the fourth, fifth, or sixth because let everybody get their in and out fixed somewhere else. Let the traffic be somewhere else. Let all of that happen somewhere else. And let's get our in and out when people aren't going to come and essentially like clog up the line and bother us. Okay. Councilman Pike said immediately, I want the first in and out. I want every stinking dollar from every, like put it on the edge of the city, put it on a highway, route the traffic appropriately so it doesn't disturb the highway or anything and suck every single penny out of that business. That's how we get tax dollars to pay for things like parks and rec and and things we love. What do you think? Well, so I'm going to hijack your subject and pivot it into uh, something I wanted to talk about uh, that's kind of related to that. You know where an in and out would be amazing? Where? Like right near Linder and 44. Like, yes. Like right there. But guess what? That would be the dumbest place to put it right now. Because if you go look up ACHD, there's somebody else that's also running in the rage that should know about this. And hopefully they talk about this uh, as well because they had control over what uh, highway developments. I don't think Mary May is inclined to come in and talk to me. That's I've, okay. I've offered several times and no, nothing against her. I don't, I don't but, think she's interested in communicating. But I'll give her credit where credit's due. While she was on that highway division, they did a great study saying, you know what? Linder between Chinden and 44, we, we need to expand this. We need to widen this. It can't be one way in each. Um, there's already some easement that we already have access to. So it's very minimal purchasing of adjacent properties. Um there's a couple of rivers going through there, so that's extra. But they've already done the study. It's been done since 2019. Mm. It's Linder past uh, past 44 going to a Floating Feather. That will be, it's green lit, it will be expanded by 2026. So into the neighborhoods and into our city, we will actually have expansion. But getting to our city... We have a report ready to go. We have a shovel-ready project to expand. So if people talk about traffic on Eagle Road coming in and out of our city, they all want to go to Linder to ease that traffic. But it's like if you – like 5 o'clock, if you try and make a left turn from Chinden onto Linder to get into – like the traffic's backed up almost – I'm going to be hyperbolic here. It's backed up all the way to Costco. Right. <laughs> it's it's uh, It's it's – a huge just traffic nightmare, Linder and Chinden. I have a, I have a dear friend and, who just moved over right right on that corner. It's Floating Feather and Linder, just north of uh, excuse me, not Floating, but uh, forty four and Linder. Yeah, just north of forty four. So he has to make a left coming out and then to to get onto Linder. He's like, it's a train wreck. Yeah. He's like, I have to plan for like an extra ten minutes, and I, it's like four cars in front of me, and it's going to be forever. And you you sit there in line, ready to go left watching like three, four, five light cycles before it's your turn to actually right. turn left. And they kind of have to do that because you're turning everybody left onto a two-lane road, one in each direction. Hmm. Like they could time that light to be longer to add more people if it was a bigger road. But so can we put an in and out over there? Well, that would be very unwise from a traffic point of view to have a two-lane road uh, right. ingressing from uh, Meridian to get there. <laughs> like uh, that would make everybody in that area very very upset oh it'd be terrible but what are we doing to expand that Mm. it's a shovel ready project that is not on anybody's calendar there's no timeline to expand that at all now but but we're going to expand this low volume road 
right. from Linder to Floating Feather. That's ready to go, and they're going to do that. So, so this is what I mean in my um, when I when I'm on social media, when I'm on podcasts like this, socializing the people. Like we have to think about coordinating with other cities, coordinating with the county, and I don't think we're doing a good job of that. Like that's what I mean is like Linder. Like I was so disappointed to realize. There's nothing happening with Linder for the foreseeable future. It'll just be a traffic jam for everybody in uh, coming to and from West Eagle. Just amazing to me that yeah, that's, that's the state of things over there. There's an interesting sentiment that that I've heard a bit, which is, you know, we the the residents of Eagle want their privacy and you know quiet, sleepy town, which which is great, but also that we're like this mass transit hub, we, like everybody's right. coming through. And it's like, well, we don't want to expand too much because we, we want to stay sleepy, but we can't stop people from coming through Eagle. Like everyone in the Treasure Valley who wants to go up to like McCall is coming through Eagle. And, or, or see the drag races up near Emmett, right? Right. You got to you gotta, you kind of touch Eagle briefly, but depending on where you come from, you have to hit 44 to the 16 to get to the drag track out there near Emmett. I don't know if you're aware of that or not. Um, I've heard, I've heard about that. Um, it's it's I super fun. I it's, been. it's, it's a, it's a great hot, hot August nights thing to do. Go out there and watch the drag races. You know what I want? I want, uh, uh, trailer racing. I want people in like a 1988 station wagon with a trailer hitch <laughs> and like some wood side teardrop shape trailer to be on a dirt circle racing another 1986 dodge caravan with a trailer hitch and like going they actually around. kind of have stuff like that at the meridian dirt track see meridian god man so they got you, some cool stuff going you got on over big there. owls and you got the dirt track yeah. like you got all the entertainment <laughs> matt todd wants that's right <laughs> that's, that's pretty wild um you we keep talking about a lot of things but before i'm i ask you a different question if Linder between 44 and Chinden was two la- or excuse me four lanes instead of two lane and you could just like wave your magic wand do you want the first or the fourth in and out the third the third maybe the second okay we're closer we're closer in line i want the first so well if we're uh, uh i know we're all jo- joking here but if we're being serious the one on fairview and uh eagle was always going to be the first in the Valley. It was always going to be the first, no matter what. Uh, They were starting negotiations with us, with Eagle, or at least broaching the topic with Eagle. Uh, They already had it in their master plan. That's going to be the one. That's where they wanted it to be. So being the second or the third, you know, uh, yeah, I'm a little offended that the old Pier 1 imports over by the mall, like whoever's going to go to that one is going to have the very interesting experience. You know, because it's on the back of the mall behind uh, the Cheesecake Factory. And so getting in and out of that parking lot today is already a bit of a mess. So so when that one goes live, uh, you know, for the for the citizens of Boise uh, and everybody off the 84 going over there, that's going to be a fun time. The Na- <laughs> that's going to be a fun time. <laughs> the Na- Napa one makes perfect sense. When they said, oh, we're, we're opening up in Napa and where it's opening, I'm like, that that's a food corridor. Napa chose that they decided as a city that they wanted that to be a commercial and retail corridor with the cracker barrels with the you know in and outs with the jack in the boxes that's what they wanted for that city and that zone and and it's right off of the freeway and it pulls a lot of trucker traffic in there uh so it's a it's a great addition to that so that's why i think you know like linder and 44 hill and 55 these are the crust of our city but we we get that tax revenue, and also I want to see people forget um, like service and service work, like whether you're at some retail boutique or you're at a fast food or a fast casual. Like these are perfect jobs for our younger citizens, the 16 year old, 17 year old, 18 year old. I want them at an In and Out Burger making 22 bucks an hour, you know, and they just drive over to Linder. They're not driving all the way into. Uh, Meridian to get to their job like you want this uh, citizen to learn how to drive learn how to be responsible put a couple of bucks in their pocket you know after school you know these jobs are perfect to build character in our young citizens Um, and and having some of these options available for them closer so they're not 
commuting all the way to these places. There's something to be said for that. You know, uh, I worked at a theme park. I was making corn dogs and burning the tips of my fingers for a summer, you know, at, at uh, Great America and California and everything. But, you know, I learned like there's consequences if you don't show up on time. There's consequences if you don't keep clean tables for your guests. There's consequences if you don't train the staff to move the line like like uh but i also learned like how do you manage people you know right. as as a 16 year old i'm learning how to how to manage other people um and like the most unmanageable cat herding kind of people right. teenagers right. you know At so if you can manage America. a teenager yeah right <laughs> that that doesn't that is watching everybody else around them have fun right. and teaching them that the value of showing up on time and getting a paycheck but anyways uh, i think that's an important role in society of having these types of uh, businesses available to our younger citizens um, to, to learn and understand how business right. works from a different perspective. Absolutely. That's a, uh, that's, that's a perspective that hasn't really been brought up, which is you, uh, engaging, um, engaging employment opportunities for our younger, our, our like high school age people. But talk to me about just out of high school, because one of the things I love about this area is you don't, it's not a foregone conclusion that everybody's going to go to college. And e- even being in, um, even being in college admissions for almost 20 years as I was, I don't believe everybody should go to college. I think, I think we have over inflated the cost of college. I think we have over inflated the idea of benefit of most colleges. I think we have in, uh, inflated the, the list of majors that people can study. Like, Whenever somebody says sociology, my I just I go red. I just I don't know what you're going to do with a sociology degree for like a hundred thousand dollars. But I digress. No, you're right. Um, but the, the I ha, I actually do have yeah. a very specific question to yeah, this please. because you made me think about it. For the people that are trying to integrate into college after they graduate from high school and don't want to live at home, but they also don't want to leave and go like hours away. We have very limited housing options for those people. That's right. Right. We don't. We don't have a large uh, collection of apartments for them, and the apartments in particular. And they, let's face it, the nineteen-year-old working in and out, although maybe a totally valuable, reasonable uh, citizen of the area, just probably doesn't have the finances to buy a house. Right. Right. So, what do you make of the apartment argument? Because this is another one like public safety that gets people really fired up. The, there are lots of homeowners that say we absolutely should not build apartments. This is not the area for it. Let them live somewhere else. It doesn't matter if they want to come work here, fine, but like they don't need to live here. And then other people who are sympathetic that might have aging relatives that need you know lower cost um, uh, or, or less t- permanent, right? If you're an older person, maybe you don't want to a rancher and, you know, like a backyard demo and things like that. They want smaller housing options that are still in close proximity to their loved ones and caretakers. Yeah, what do you right. make of all this? Do we need more apartments or do we need to be very careful with apartments or do we not need more apartments at all? Yeah. So I'll be very measured in my responses because as you should be, <laughs> a lot of people will take things in this topic area out of context mm-hmm. very quickly and they'll like to chop up and, you know, um, Noam Chomsky, even though he's a linguistics uh, professor, he loves using ellipses for a linguistics professor. I found that fascinating. Like, they said this, dot, 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 and this other thing. And uh, and I'm like, well, the dot, dot, dot is the stuff that, like, provides the context and you're purposely right. reshaping a thing. So for a linguistics expert, I find that, that uh, a little off-putting. So, um, so I'll say that up front that um, I hope people don't ellipse my comments here uh, and, and shape it into something that's not. But uh, put frankly, uh, apartments in Eagle, that is the shape of a city and apartments are part of the shape of any city. So a non-zero amount of apartments is appropriate. All apartments is also inappropriate. Like we're not gonna be 100% city of apartments but we can't be a city with zero apartments. And people forget we have the Eagle Golf Course. When they developed that, they put townhomes in there. They understood some people want to retire to a townhome and have access to a golf course. Some people want to retire to, or not retire, just they love golf. and They they have a family and they need a single detached home for them and their family to be able to spread out, but be next to the golf course. I mean, if we take that example, that's like the pristine example of how we look at Eagle, right? Some people want to retire to Eagle and it means a condo or a townhome uh, or just uh, an apartment. 
um, and that should be satisfactory. What volume of apartments? Where would those apartments go? You know, do we want three-story apartments, four-story apartments? I mean, we have a three-story apartments today right next to the cement track factory right there on 44. That's all within Eagle space, right? That's uh, true. Or That's kinda, actually true. It's it's not, uh, depending on how things are curved, it might be Eagle, might not be Eagle, but it's it's adjacent. It's like literally right there next to us. There's apartments there. And seemingly when you go through that parking lot, like they said, like the uh, another person said on your cast, when you go through the parking lot of the uh, apartments off of Linder, it's, you know, normal people, affluent people, a blend of all that. So, but then again, there's the other argument, and I'm going to be really hyperbolic and really stretch and d- 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 depart reality for just a second. There's a lot of people that are concerned that apartments um, could go in the way of like Section 8 housing or Section 8 vouchers. And right now, a lot of at least here in Idaho, a lot of municipalities have control and a lot of landlords have control over when and where they accept a Section 8 voucher. But there is a growing concern nationally that if there's a Supreme Court ruling that says, doesn't matter what your local law says, all the way down to the city council, like if you're a landlord, you have to accept a Section 8 voucher. I think people are concerned about that. Like, okay, we build these apartments, they're normal apartments, their market rate, they're not low income, they're, and there's plenty, like, you know what, my parents wanted me to get some some humility, so at 18 they said, you know, you got to get your own apartment, you right. know, and but they want to stay close to them, or maybe they're going to pay for their apartment, they just want them to have a level of responsibility that's new to them, or maybe they don't get along with their parents, and they're just right. like, but I love Eagle, and I want to stay here where my friends are still here, right, or where my community I've built is here. Uh, so you want some apartments here for that, but then people are concerned, well, what if, what if some Supreme court ruling suddenly says like, you know, somebody who's never going to get back on their feet is permanently always going to be in an apartment right there and causing problems. Right. That's the concern that's presented. Right. I don't know if we'll get to that point. We certainly probably won't get to that point in my opinion in, in the next 15 to 20 years, I don't see the Supreme court saying something of that nature. So we have to be mindful that, like, yeah, we think apartments should come in. I think apartments should come in where they come in, how they come in, the velocity, the height, all these kind of things. Uh, You know, Mayor Pierce is absolutely correct about, like, the aesthetic. When you walk through the downtown, when you drive through the town, uh, you feel like you're in Eagle, right? I mean, let's not forget, we have tons of trailer parks here in Eagle. They exist. They're on Old Street, State Street. They're on New State Street. They're kind of nestled in in different uh, areas of Old Town. So we do have a diverse group of people that live here. And, you know, when I look at the police blotters, we're not seeing the apartment complexes getting any more or less calls. The trailer parks are not getting any more or less calls than the city at large. I mean, it's like somebody might make the argument of like maybe some light tick up tick because, you know, we get so few calls here, one call can, like, sandbag a whole category, right, right, right. <laughs> you know. Uh, but um, I think it's an appropriate thing to think about. Right. Just where do we put it and, and how do we roll it out? I will throw a little shade for the for the younger audience out there using some lingo there. Uh, uh, I will throw some uh, shade on um, that those the complex that's going up near Edgewood. Like, at some point or another, that will complete. When will that complete? It's been going on for three, four years now. Uh, And I know that there's COVID and everything involved, but so was another project that's started after them and completed before them on the other side of town, right? So um, I'm a little curious of like how much the city is going to hold people to task. Like if we say this project is going to go through and you give us this timeline, what happens when you drift from those timelines? You know, what does that mean? you know, for the city, because we have a plan and we want you to be a part of our plan. I mean, because we all are doing this plan together. So when they don't hold up their end of the bargain of the master plan of how growth is going to happen at in the city of Eagle, um, and then the neighbors are like, we got floodlights up for four years in our backyard waiting for this thing to be finished being built. You know, is that fair to everybody lining their backyards? I don't know if you read the very nice, well done, comprehensive Boise Dev article about that. That, no, uh, I didn't. I didn't read that one in particular. But they talked to everybody at all levels, and all I saw in the article was 
uh, that didn't work out as planned, but oh well, was the sentiment I got from the city. And I'm like, no, there's something to be done here. <laughs> you know, right. like put a little pressure on the developer, like what's going on? Are you going to finish this? Are you not? Are there going to be, you know, consequences for not meeting these deadlines that we've made four or five years ago? Right. Let's put some penalties in place. You know, so, right. uh, well, I don't want to use the P word, but, okay. you know. Okay. Let's, let's put some incentives in place or have just some agreement that, hey, look, this this acceptance of your project or this building permit or whatever, like there is a time frame on this. You can't wait 20 years for, you know, or start break ground and then abandon the project and come back slowly. And, you know, the neighbors have construction or again, fencing and stuff. Or again, have the communication. So right. when my citizens come to me as a city councilman and say, I've had a floodlight in my backyard for 18 months, I can give them a response you know what, you're right. They've been communicating with us. This is what's going on. I don't know why they're not telling you directly, but I'll tell you, I've been in constant contact. That wasn't the sentiment that I got from that Boise Dev article at right. all. It was, huh, I guess they're not done, are they? That that shouldn't be your response from right. the city, in my opinion. You know. Yeah, but man, I keep reaching out to Boise Dev because obviously I'm having these great interviews like yeah. we're having right now and, and with everyone else. Like, you know, you guys are doing the same interviews I'm doing, but you're doing them in like legacy journalism fashion, right? right. Like, just give me the list of questions you want me to ask. And let me have the conversation and I'll make sure I hit your questions as well. <laughs> and then like you have a living article. They get, people can hear it from the candidate with, with no with no journalistic uh, manipulation. Not that no, Boise Dev no. is anything but uh, that, but honorable. It's just a different form of media. And, you know, like you go to uh, an elementary school or middle school, well, let's say elementary school and everybody's standing around waiting for their kids, looking at the phone. They're not reading on their phone or at least not majority of them. They're like scrolling through, you know, Instagram and things of that nature. So right. meet people yeah. where they are. Um, yeah. yeah. So I, li I actually really appreciate your comment of uh, a non-zero number. So it's like, yeah, look, we should have some. We don't want too many, so we just have to be careful. But the idea that like, oh, apartments don't belong here in Eagle, it's like apartments are part of a city plan, right? Like you have to have, well, you don't have to, but you should have if you're going to be a fully functioning city that takes care of uh, people uh, just out of school or gives people a spot when they're relocating or, you know, you have... I mean, God forbid, the couple split up and somebody needs temporary lodging or, or you right, know, they, right. they want to be close to their kids, but they can't afford a brand new house. You know, people yeah, need... Yeah, a seven-year-old wants to drive five minutes, not five hours to right. see the other person. Right. That's a different... Or, or aging, aging relatives. You know, like aging relatives is one of the biggest things that I feel like people in Eagle should understand, which is, look, when the parents get older, they start their retirement. Maybe they want to sell their house as part of the retirement. Maybe you want to reverse mortgage and stay in your house. I don't know. Whatever yeah, you want to do. But right. the point is you, you might... Or you just want to get closer to your loved one that might be caring for you. All of these things. Now, 100%. speaking of speaking of older relatives... Yeah. The senior center. Yeah. Our, the senior center. I mean, this is one that almost needs no introduction, but yeah. obviously the, the city is suing the senior center to recoup the money the city that the city had funding from outside sources for. They did. Right. So these were not e citizen, uh, excuse me, Eagle citizen tax dollars. Am I correct? The money that they gave, the it was, city it gave. It was part of this uh, COVID response right. packages. Right. That, that was given. Doled from, out. Right. From so, the federal government. So yeah. the federal government gave the city of Eagle some money and said, hey, look, help your distressed businesses. The city of Eagle invited the senior center to come on and apply for it. The senior center provided all the documentation. The Eagle Council did decide to give them money. They got money. Now they want the money back. So the city's suing the senior center. Senior center is suing the city. Right. Someone else is suing the city and Valley Transit and the seniors like their train wreck of lawsuits and spider webs. In the midst of this, obviously, this, the Eagle Senior Center organization gets booted out of the physical residence. Now right. they're in like the Methodist Church. I believe they're in a church. I think it's the Methodist. It, it doesn't yeah. matter. They found they found uh, alternative temporary lodging. accommodations. Right. That are not. I'll use the phrase temporary it. accommodations. That's, good, that's temporary. a good. That's a good lead in. That's a good one. Uh, <laughs> hit me. Go. So, uh, you know, one of my first actions, I think, uh, once I'm sworn in, is to immediately restart the discussions of how do we get them back into that facility? Just straight up. Let's just cut through everything and say like that senior center, uh, the lease should not have been removed. It should be brought back. Um, you can go back and forth about like whose equipment is which equipment and whose deals were which deals and things that started in the late eighties and how things evolve. Um, I'd be fascinated to look at some of the original 
documentation and agreements because um, to not be permitted to renew, renew your lease for $1 per year on a no, no fault, uh, I would have to imagine somewhere buried in that documentation that they at least somebody covered themselves and said, like, you could never use no fault. Right. So I, I it's uh, or at least if somebody comes back to me and says, yeah, we looked, it's not there. But it would be fascinating for somebody to look in all that original uh, meeting minutes and, and contracts and master service agreements and lease agreements to see, hey, did somebody say on record somewhere, you know, like, don't worry, we'll never no fault you. Right. Because uh, that in of itself will save everybody a lot of time. Like right. it says here, no fault. You did a no fault. Let's just rewind this and put them back where they belong. Yeah. Um, so th- th- that's me trying to be a problem solver. Maybe it's not there, but maybe we should say, let's put them back there. And if it's not there, let's put a no fault, a no, no fault clause. It's so that they can, because let's say we put them back there and then uh, under, you know, mine and the rest of the city uh, leaders guidance in our terms and then our terms expire. And then somebody's going to want to boot them out again and they're going to be right back where they started. Right. Right. So I think if that's not in those clauses today, we should get them back in there and get a clause to say, we will, we cannot no fault you out of this. So you would res- not only restore the senior center, but you would take m- attempt to take meaningful steps to prevent this from happening again. hundred percent, hundred percent. People are worried about the transit being required to come into our town, like having a bus stop on state street, having a bus stop on 44. Um, people are really pushing back. They don't like the idea of public transit expanding its lines. And we don't technically have to do that today because of the size of our city and the scope of our city. But as a city grows by Supreme Court rules, there will come a time when our city is going to be required to do that kind of stuff. So, and I know that this bus thing is coming out of left field while we're talking about the senior center, but think of it this way. If they don't have a senior center and they say, well, we're just going to bus our seniors to Meridian so they can go to a library or senior citizen center there. We're kind of putting ourselves on a path to uh, the city being required to have like paved in bus stops and everything. And if the city citizens don't really want uh, bus stops yet, I mean, it's going to come like maybe 30, 40 years from now. There's just no escaping the uh, event horizon of that black hole. Like the federal government says, that's just how cities are. They get big enough you have to be part of your county's transportation story. But we don't have to now. But when you start going down the road of getting like forced paratransit, forced buses to offset that this this thing that's in our city is no longer here, you're going to speed the velocity of mandatory bus routes in, in Eagle. And if that doesn't sound appealing to our citizens, then they should, because they might look at the senior center and say, I'm not a senior or I'm a senior and I don't care about that. It just doesn't apply to me. Well, maybe, you know, having bus routes does apply to you. And this is going down a route, in my opinion, and people can disagree with me. It's going down a route that um, a lot of people would not be amused with in the city of having forced bus stops everywhere if we go in that direction. Um, So if you don't want that, then maybe reconsider your opinions on the center, regardless of whether you use it or you care about it, you know, that sort of thing. Well, I feel like... If we're all lucky enough, we will all get old. Yeah. Right. And I, I think that, I mean, you don't have to care about old people, but it's like, what was that movie, Tin Cup, where uh, Kevin, Costner Kevin Costner is criticizing his competition because he's trying to woo the girl and the girl likes the competition who's a jerk. He's like, I will tell you something. He hates old people, children, and dogs. <laughs> like, and then later, like yeah. somebody shows that like the grandparents bring the grandchild and the dog to get an autograph. And he's like, it's the trifecta. And he's like, oh. That's <laughs> anyway, funny. yeah, it's a, it's a tough one. Um, there's, there's a big looming thing that not many people are talking about. Some are, but it seems that the utilities in this area have like snuck up and become an issue like the water rights and it seems to me um uh christopher hayden who's also running was telling me that he feels that the water rights that avmore did or did not have were actually part of the key considerations for eagle allowing them in because they would have been in to some degree um their construction would have been hampered right right because they didn't have extending water rights and here the eagle water company you know, that's not a black and white kind of thing. Talk to me about water rights. Well, yeah. Well, in that particular case, uh, again, people 
uh, if presented with all the information, maybe they can have a, a more bigger picture of, of things like development in our area and specifically Avamore. You've got a LaCroix right there as well, by the way. I'm oh, thank you. Crack one. Appreciate I don't know if you want a little bit here. I appreciate that. But um, the water rights deal was already a done deal before the annexation. So any argument about like whether or not we need to annex them to save water for the rest of the city or save water for or make sure everybody's pooling in from their own water resources to the rest of us in Eagle, uh, that was already done. So we could have we could have just not had Avamore be part of Eagle and had a water rights agreement with the development of Avamore. So I just want to put that out there very clearly. Like we didn't annex them to get water rights. We already figured that out long and it's a 10 year uh water agreements with them and then there's the arsenic questions going on out there and also well, what's going to think... be developed and what's not going to be developed out there so whose water were you really offering to who there's a lot of murky questions around water rights uh in north eagle right now back up with the arsenic what yeah. do you mean well there's uh, some reports out that some of the wells in that area the area i want to be very careful because i don't want to say anything like like defamatory but just people are talking about like various different water availability in the north eagle master plan had come up with high levels of arsenic so basically you can't tap these wells or you can't add these wells to the to the master water plan like like where it gets funneled through for filtration and final delivery and all that so there's a lot of unavailability of water in or near Avamore. I'll just say that very carefully because I don't want to say something and have somebody uh, uh, say, like, you got that all wrong. But, uh, yeah, if you read some articles and some some reports that were published, uh, like, basically, water feasibility reports, uh, there, there's a water arsenic issue yeah. in our valley, and specifically up there. And whether that's impacted their need to work with the Eagle Water and Suez water to make sure they get enough water for their development. That's a big question that people are asking and we're not seeing either the developer or the city or more importantly, the uh, Suez and, and Eagle water. They should be answering these questions as sure. frankly as possible. Like, no, nope, that was hyperbolic. Like here's this, this, and this, I don't know where that came from, or I know where that came from and they were wrong. Anytime somebody says something like there's bad stuff in the water, you want, especially as city leaders that have control of these things, if it's false, you want to get out in front of it. But right now it's floating out there that like there's just some water that's unavailable under the ground out there. And so that was allegedly the motivating factor to shift around who has access to what mm. and who has rights over what in the area. And uh, maybe that's 100 percent wrong, but people need to come out and. They need to come on your podcast and tell you, or they need to I would love go it. write a letter to the editor yeah. to to one of these papers or, or online uh, blogs and and set the record straight. But as of right now, a lot of people are like, oh, they only did it because they found out they had access to less good water than they anticipated. Yeah, I would I would love to talk to somebody from Water District and understand like what the actual water quality is and if there are any areas that that have lesser favorable quality. Yeah. Um, and it, it, that's actually a big concern for my my wife and I because we live, you know, I mean Dry Creek Ranch used to be a farm and, you know, fertilizers and whatnot. Yeah. So nitrogen and everything yeah, gets into exactly. the water table. Yeah, and we we get, we draw from wells and um shout out Action Plumbing by the way. Now yeah. that we're on the topic, um they came out Water softener, RO systems, the the whole bit. Um, and in fact, my my neighbor, Chris, actually came out to put a RO system in originally, and then we had to drill through this countertop anyway. And then my, my neighbor, who's also a contractor, Chris, helped me with the RO system. But we love having an RO system. In, mm -hmm. And it, it, we actually have a uh, an electric kettle, one of those glass ones, right? We yep. make a lot of pour love over those. coffee. Yeah. We had a we had a whole house filter and a water softener, and this thing was cloudy as cloudy could be oh, from no. the minerals and whatnot in the water, just just stuff in it. Even with the whole house filter, and we got the RO RO water set up, and it has literally declouded the yeah. glass. Like everything is crystal clear now. Like our dishwasher is crystal clear. Like it's kind of awesome. But yeah, water water is a huge consideration, well, and made that national news years ago with Flint, and just like, oh right. my gosh, right? Like how could this have happened? And then you find out the kids have been poisoned for like decades, for a long time. Yes, right. and so we have uh, the Suez that turned into Viola. Um, 
we'll we'll just call it what it is. It was a fiasco because um, the city actually made some attempts to try and socialize to the citizens. This is what we're doing. This is what we're not doing. This is why we think it's a good deal for this company to come in and acquire this gentleman. He was like in his 80s and he just wanted to sell off his Eagle Water business and he was going to sell it to them. And a lot of people wanted the city to take on that responsibility. And there was there was at least some uh, level of communication there. But um, but the city was pretty straightforward that they didn't want to buy it. Like he would have sold it to the city and then it would have been a and like now all of us would be paying Eagle Water. Now, like in my subdivision, you know, I pay Viola. People are really concerned, like, well, they're going to have unchecked cost increases or the way like because the gentleman that had it, he was just like, I'm making enough money. <laughs> he right. rarely raised rates. And, and when he did, people are like, oh, you could raise it more than this. Uh, and he didn't want or need have a need for that. So, so, but they are a multinational conglomerate. Viola, like Suez was out of France and Viola is out of I, uh, somewhere in Europe. I can't remember where, but it's this big conglomerate of different municipal utilities, not just water. They, they're in other like spaces as well. But, um, but yeah, so they are incentivized to constantly go to our commission, our utilities commissions, and ask for water rate increases. And then the, you know, they they told us, oh, well, we went ahead and did you a favor and did seventy million in, in water changes as soon as we bought it. And now when I turn on my tub, my bathroom smells like a, a community pool, it just reeks of chlorine, after they took over. And I was like, well, you know, it's good that you're treating water, but I feel like like. When I filled up my tub before, it didn't smell like a, it didn't smell right. like a chlorinated community pool, and like now my whole bathroom reeks of of like uh, of that. So they're definitely changing and altering the water, and people are, I'm not happy about that, you know. Right. So um, and you know, so the, the city, I felt like uh, everybody feels feels like they could have either done a better job of saying why they didn't have an interest in buying it, or they could have just bought it. Like right. instead they were like, these are the reasons why we want to push that away from us. Instead, they should have said, these are the reasons why it doesn't make sense for us to take that on. Like uh, they should have asked, they should have answered the question differently. They kind gotcha. of distanced themselves. Like that's a private thing and let them do their private stuff. And the citizens here were very vocal on that one of, we don't want it to be a private thing. Give us a reason why it shouldn't be taken on by the city from the taxpayers that want you to take it on. Instead, they said, we don't even want to broach it. That's that's not something we should broach. And they're like, we're asking you, please broach. Right. <laughs> and tell us why not to. Uh, so I think, uh, again, communication. Maybe, maybe it could have settled the exact same way Suez so bought the water, and that was it. But at least we all felt like our voices were heard. We right. all felt like we had a seat at the table. You know, like it didn't go the way we wanted, but at least we know and we can – walk away saying you know you know like yeah i don't wholly agree with that but i understand why they chose to do it that way but w nobody's walking away from that d discussion or that debate feeling that way right. right right like oh i have all these answers and f maybe philosophically i don't agree but i see the reasoning right very, again very like wait why oh suddenly we <laughs> yeah suddenly <laughs> uh suddenly it's a done deal so so as yeah. is in and and everybody else it just has to deal with it, right? right so, right. yeah, Robert, we've covered a lot of a lot of landscape, a lot of stuff. Um, my goodness, what a what a conversation! Is there anything else you would like to to express? Yeah, I just want to let everybody know because a lot of people might not recognize me or know who I am, but you know, I'm on my HOA of my subdivision, Great Sky Estates. I've been on it for a couple of years now and everything. So, uh, you know, there's I have like a non-zero number of uh, public service. I'm constantly going to the city of Eagle as a representative of my 179 people in my subdivision saying, you know, hey, are you going to do this or are you going to do that or we're not happy you're doing that. And so um, I'm very familiar with City Hall and working with them. And uh, the other thing that was mentioned in one of the articles written about me, which was uh, the shooting sports park, um, I'm confident that we'll get um, actual uh, firearms lanes and, and activities right now it's kind of limited to archery that they're building out I'm hoping that they're not going to do a, a bait and switch so I'll go on the record right now if for whatever reason you guys don't like me and don't want me in city council but mark my, my words like I hope the city doesn't decide you know what we built the archery and we're going to stop there 
Mm, you know, that's it. Uh, like we have enough of a shooting park. We have archery. I hope that they stick to their guns and that the private public partnership, they're looking for donations from the community. I hope that that, you know, comes to fruition and people step up and make the donations. The city keeps its promise to the people that donated that land. And it's not just limited to archery, but, you know, all shooting sports. You know, I think that's a very unique thing about Eagle. We're very, you know, like a lot of people here are very much ranchers. A lot of people, they're in a subdivision like me, but like I have to drive all the way to Meridian if I want a defined space, we'll say, to go shooting. You know, if I don't want to do that BLM, if I want to have a range master, you know, I have my kids. I take my kids out um, once a month. Uh, my daughter's a crack shot with her with her 22 long rifle uh, um bullets um she's just now moving up to 380 for handguns very proud of that that's awesome uh, but i'd like to be able to just drive to the sports park and do that i don't want to have to drive all the way out to you know uh, a couple of indoor ranges she doesn't like indoor ranges because of the even with the ear protection yeah, right. and the smell that builds up in a contained space you know so i don't want to have to drive all the way out to black's creek or all the way out to nampa or codwell or just be out there on blm land i want somewhere where when i bring my daughter you know, like there's a range master. He can make sure there's there's no steel stuff to yeah, sure. prevent fires and stuff like that. And, and things stay cleaned up and everybody pauses so we can go and readjust yeah, targets. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, some people actually like that level of uh, extra level of, of safety, especially with the kids around and everything. And having something right here. I mean, Meridian doesn't have that. Boise doesn't have that. You know, what local municipality do you know of that's a city that has an outdoor gun range? That would be an amazing feather in our cap, you know. And when people hear Eagle, I want them to hear, oh, Eagle, the one with the public gun range. Yes, because people draw a lot of conclusions about who we are and which Bill of Rights we care about here just by that statement alone. And and I I think that's what I want people to know when they think Eagle. You know, like that's another, you know, it's a fun thing they did that wasn't necessary a few years ago. They passed an ordinance saying they were a a gun sanctuary city. I don't know if you remember this or not. I do. I do recall. Yeah. And you know, it's a bit of fluff. What It doesn't really mean anything. But what it does mean, and I do agree, if I was on the city council, then I would have voted yes to. Again, it's just sending a, a, a nice gentle note. Like we're being a little political at the national sphere by doing some of those. But it's at least a nice, parental, polite, gentle nudge reminding people like, yeah, that's who we are here. And, and that's what's important to us is all of our bill of rights not just some of our bill of rights so right. so yeah sorry a little long winded no, there no, but no. that but the Beautiful. sports park is is really a passion project that, that somebody got started and i want to see that through to the end yeah absolutely um one more question you remind yeah. me with the sports park we didn't really talk about west park and yeah. i mean it's uh, obviously a lot of people have a lot of opinions about it what do you think is it, th- there's a problem obviously that we don't have any parks on the west side of eagle Right. right. That is an issue. But we also, like you've been pointing out, you're not saying no to anything, but it has to be the right place. Right. right. Was West Park the right place for a neighborhood park? Or is the sports complex that's definitely going to be bigger and awesomer and everything, but definitely farther away? Was that the right call? Well, uh, you know, I'll use an old commercial. For, uh, I'll say CKS Dos. Why not both? You know, there's an old uh, taco yeah, yeah. shell commercial yeah, yeah. where they're like why not both so um uh you know that's how i feel like yeah why do we have to sell that we can still do the sports park and we can still do we still could have done that i don't uh especially with all of this free land that we're supposed to get from avamore right mm-hmm. so we're supposed to get this whole Aquarian thing we're supposed to get this whole river run thing uh we're supposed to have all these special spaces that are allocated towards uh you know expanding our our community's parts, parks and recs experience, mm-hmm. again, all north of Floating Feather, right? So, again, like West, West the Eagle definitely has a, like a activities desert, right. so to speak there. So this West End next to the high school, perfect spot. It bleeds right over from that. Like, oh, we have to worry about parking? No, we already have the high school parking on a Saturday you know, you coordinate with the high school, make sure they're not having like a band thing or or like a sports event there. Or now they can coordinate like, great, we were thinking about doing our own baseball thing. 
we can do all of our baseball at the sports park instead. Mm. So there's a, a, a public public partnership that like, a, a really big missed opportunity there. And let me tell you, um, I don't go to Boise's softball park anymore. Not since the incident, they have no parking around over there. It's completely a mess. All of the neighbors, they put up illegal cones all along in the side streets to prevent people from parking where they have a right to park. And uh, the city sits there and watches people park in the wrong spots and they just ticket everybody. They're not being good police uh, citizen stewards of saying like, hey, I notice you're about to park here. This is I know it's kind of hard to tell with the trees and the signs, but this is actually a no parking zone. They sit there like, like literally they sit there smiling at each other smiling we have video of them like getting all excited like i get to write another ticket and as soon as the person gets a thousand feet they jump out and they quickly write a ticket and put it there so they watched the whole time and they didn't say hey like just just as a good service because i'm a good public servant right that's not a spot right you know like i know we're working on getting a sign to make it more clear but that's not instead it's you know a revenue harvesting place so we don't go to the softball park over in boise anymore because like one it was poorly planned and two instead of them working with their you know public servants to to work with what they have to work with they're just harvesting money for the city like that's just a bad experience for everybody sure so this west end one could have solved so much of that easy access coming in off the 44 right near legacy where a lot of people are interested in baseball and softball um bringing other people into our community i go to my friend's house in codwell and like you're one of those eagle people they don't have any incentives to come in and enjoy like if their kid had a softball game they're like oh we thought you were these pinky up hoity-toity people you know, you put your pants on one leg at a time, just like the rest of us, you know, like, uh, yes, we do enjoy like this kind of higher echelon vibe here, but because we all work together to build a nice vibe and there's no reason why we can't share it with people. Right. And that was a missed opportunity for softball teams from all over the Valley that could have came in and saw like, this is who Eagle is. I don't know. Like, uh, I'm very, no, no, no. Like, uh, like misty eyed about this kind of stuff. I really want like, like, like we're citizens of the treasure Valley, not like I'm an Eagle and you're in Middleton. You know, it's like, no, we're all here in the treasure Valley. We all look at each other and make eye contact. We all tip our hats when we walk down the street, whether we know each other, regardless of what city. And that could have been the crown jewel of a sports park thing that I feel like it's going to be missed now. Yeah. The, uh, that sentiment is very very near and dear to me because the one of the greatest criticisms i had of of danville and northern california in general is that you had an incredible disparity in in socioeconomic status like right on the borders of towns and there was this there was no dignity you know going back and forth both ways it became like a real us versus them it was like oh you don't want to leave danville and you know, go into that area. And then every time you go out to eat, it's like you're the the server. There was no economic opportunity in that immediate area. So they were driving like a half an hour in from some other place. And there was, there was just animosity and, yeah. and weirdness. And it's like, that could happen here. And it, that was one of the most striking things when I first came here. I, I remember we went to Rembrandt's and people were nice. There wasn't like weird sideways glances. There wasn't like, oh, thank you they're just like oh you're welcome yeah I'm like oh my gosh like nice people like yeah. there's there's dignity for all yeah you know absolutely. and i and i think that's a really important thing um making sure that not only does eagle flow into eagle but we all flow into each other successfully right and, and we integrate because again as people pointed out eagle is this like transit hub and you don't want it to be when people come into our little section of the freeways or the highways or you know their their travel plans, that it becomes this weird thing. You wanna you want it to be good. Yeah, absolutely, hundred yeah. percent. That's a great it. great note to end on right there. Absolutely. Well, Robert, <laughs> thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for the things you're bringing to light. I hope the campaign goes well, win, lose, or draw. And again, I just I appreciate your actions here. Awesome. Thank you so much. This podcast is brought to you by mtustudios.com. If you are looking to start a podcast or make content for any level of your business, MTU Studios can help. Just reach out to us today and we can start shooting tomorrow.